WWE Superstar Cedric Alexander here to ask you one question. Or maybe many questions. Do you like wrestling? Do you like podcasts? Do you have YouTube? Do you have Spotify? Do you have any other form of social media where you can listen to podcasts? Well, then you should be listening to A to the K Wrestle Talk. That's A to the K Wrestle Talk. Listen to it because I said so. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another week of A to the K's Wrestle Talk podcast. You're here with Anthony, and as always, uh, the main man, Carl. Hi, guys. So, shall we just jump straight into it, Carl? I think people are, are more than familiar with our format and now. Um, so, we're going to go through this week in wrestling. I'm going to talk about the main four shows. Um, before we get into it, we'll talk um, just on the Double or Nothing pay per view. I nearly forgot what it was there, Carl, but I saved it. <laughs> um, so, obviously, that's going to be our seg free this week because it's um, happened just yesterday. Just Was it yesterday? Was it today? It was yesterday. Um, yeah. So, we have some sort of thoughts on, on the outcome of that. Obviously, it's got some impact going forward for um, quite a bit of the, the storylines for AEW, which we're all enjoying at the moment. But, first of all, this week in wrestling. So, Carl, do you want to talk raw for us? I'm going to talk raw. Talk raw. Keep it raw. Um, so this week uh, the show kicked off with the biggest star in the company, uh, Charlie Caruso. Uh, of course, of course. Um, coming out um, and basically mentioning that Edge never actually gave an answer uh, in the previous week when Orton decided to try and make out that you know a wrestling match was was more brutal than uh, you know nearly killing each other. Um, yeah, in the fight. he had a fair point and. Uh... And yeah, we never got an answer to that. I'm in suspense, Carl. I'm in suspense. Exactly. So, uh, you know, she she's just coming out causing shit, saying, well, why didn't you answer, Edge? You know, and then obviously Orton comes out because, you know, that, yeah, why, why not? Um, sure. Here you go, yeah. <laughs> he comes out and he's uh, basically chatting a load of shite, as he always does. Um, that ultimately leads to Edge coming out uh, eventually. Uh, then they have this little bit of a back and forth where, you know, Randy goes on about how, yeah, he might have kept him down for 10 seconds, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Orton is the superior wrestler, um, you know, and then basically Edge is, is saying, uh, you know, this kind of career was handed to Orton. You know, he didn't he didn't dream of being a WWE champ. He didn't save to get tickets to go to the shows, etc. It was his uh, it was his backup plan, you know, because his daddy was a wrestler and he ended up here and stuff like that. So, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, exactly. He's not really wrong to be fair at all, but um, bit of it, it's just a bit of an interesting take on it, I think, for me because um, I don't know, like how I, I said last week, how do you how do you try and sell just a standard wrestling match um, as something more kind of must see than them basically being given free reign to kill each other? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, and they are really trying to push it, like without talking about stuff beyond Raw. Like, they're actually tagging this now as, like, the greatest wrestling match ever or whatever. You know, like, they're trying to push it. Like, this is going to be a real wrestling showcase. And it's like, I'm not being funny, but we know what they're like in the ring. No offense to them. But yeah. as far like, and they're both good wrestlers, but as far as, like, the best match ever, you wouldn't put these two in a match together and call it the best match ever. Like, no. I honestly, from the for me currently, I would have to put AJ Styles in a best match ever against somebody. As as far as technically gifted and and you know he, he's really come along on the mic as well since he joined WWE, um he would certainly be somebody I'd have in in that sort of category. But you go Edge and Orton, yeah, no, no Edge maybe, but um Orton he, he's not far off Cena in terms of the uh, limited move set. Mm. You know he's got something to offer the biz, but greatest wrestling wrestling. <laughs> we're gonna wrestling, you know, the technical. No, it's um, yeah. we're not gonna do any better than what we had at WrestleMania. So this is sadly gonna be a bit lackluster, I think. Yeah, it's a weird one. Like I could understand if like Orton's gimmick was to be like a really technically gifted athlete and blah blah blah, you know, like. But he's he's more of a brawler than anything else anyway. So I don't know, it just didn't kind of fly with me. But um, yeah. as expected, um, Edge finally accepts the uh, the offer for the greatest wrestling match ever. It, so it makes sense because as I understand it, Edge has grit. I think he does have grit. He yeah. likes the T-shirt that, that says grit. I think. Yeah. That, that what what's more gritty than you know wearing a T-shirt that says you've got grit, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um. So you know, given all that grit, he's going to use that grit to um to be gritty and uh, and have a gritty match. I think. I mean, it's it's one of those really. He's he's from Canada and it's always cold there, so I imagine he's got plenty of grit. That's um, a good point. That's what it's all just about. For, just for the roads and stuff, you know. I mean, that, that's how uh, he got there, um, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know. I think it's a it was it was a good kickoff. Don't get me wrong. I, I do like both of them. They're really good on the mic and stuff like that. But I'm just not really buying um, 
this whole kind of spectacle of just just a wrestling match. Yeah, I think um, to be honest, I think the trouble for for both of us is that we'd have preferred a different opponent for Edge at this point. Mm. You know, um, sadly, if Matt Hardy hadn't left, they might have even revisited Edge versus Matt. I don't know. Mm. The storyline was there, like you didn't avenge me, you let me get hit with a chair, you know that kind <laughs> of stuff. But um, yeah, you know, we're here with Orton and Edge again. I know they're struggling in terms of roster, but there are other wrestlers there. They could have done something with it. Um, and we've, we've seen this match. And admittedly, we've seen 40 fucking plus minutes of this match. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, we're going to have it again, but this time we're going to stay in the ring. Like, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, it, it, I'm more looking forward to seeing Edge take on people he's never really fought before. So, like, um, you know, as you've said, I've never seen him take on AJ Styles, but now he's just been, you know, he's gone over to... Smackdown, as an English yeah. talk about in, later. In a trade, yeah, <laughs> apparently. For, for fucking no one. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, I don't know. Um, you know, particularly who I would like like him to see, a nice little segue into what happened next on Raw, um, is I would really like to see him um, take on Seth. Um, you know what, that is a brilliant shout. It would make, it would be in keeping with Seth's character as well. He yeah. could easily sell that under the Messiah thing at the minute. Oh god, yeah. I think um, you know if if they can get that match in at a, at a money match, it's something we've never seen before, and I'd love to see. But um, and the funny thing is, they don't see how much of a money match that is because it pulls in people like you and me who are from that era of love and edge, and it pulls yeah. in the new generation who loves Rollins and the Shield and Roman Reigns and all that. It, it's great for everybody. Yeah. Um, so who knows? It's uh, it's going to be an interesting kind of uh, journey to this match. Hopefully, you know, the match is good, but I can't see it living up to uh, expectations. Um, mm, yeah. yeah, we do hear from the Monday Night Messiah next, uh, you know, <laughs> after being disheveled <laughs> and, you know, finding out he was a daddy last week. Um, you know, he seems to look he's much better. He's with it now. He, he, yeah, remembered, he's, he remembered he's an actual millionaire and thought, ah, I can handle it. Yeah, <laughs> you just pay nannies and shit. It'll be fair. <laughs> um, or mannies, maybe. Um, maybe, you know, modern world. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so Seth's basically coming out much uh, much happier now. So he's seen the light, um, and the light's brighter than ever, and it's all thanks to Ray. Which is ironic, because uh, Ray's not seen fucking much now. <laughs> he's not seen fuck all. Um, but yeah, you know, he's had a bit of a shitty week, hasn't he, uh, Ray? He got thrown off a roof that was actually just landing under a little crash mat a couple of feet down, and then he almost had his eye gouged out. So. I think this is like a segment building. I think he's going to come back again, and someone's going to like run him over or something. And it's just like... <laughs> Raise unfortunate accidents every week. <laughs> I love it. It was Rikishi and he's like, I did it for Eddie. Stop talking about him, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so we get to hear from Seth next. He's uh, seen the light and, you know, it was what happened to Ray was unfortunate, but it was necessary, apparently. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was a blessing in disguise for Ray and, you know, he should be grateful, uh, apparently. But then, obviously, every time... Every time a Mexican guy gets injured or something, he's got to have another Mexican friend, and out comes Umberto, because, you know, can't be anyone else who isn't Mexican, right? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, he, I, he might be returning the favour, because didn't he come out and help Umberto when Angel Garza and uh, Andrade were teaming up on him? It sounds like something that would happen, because, you know, he's also Mexican. So Exactly, yeah. It's probably like a nice little, nice little medley. <laughs> nice little medley. Um, but yeah, Umberto <laughs> comes out, and, you know, as as with Alistair Black last week, you know, Rollins is the one who nearly fucking blinded him. But, you know, Umberto was like, yeah, I'll have a match with Murphy because why not? Guy did fuck all, but okay. I lo- see, I love that. Uh, this, this to me is just like, it's like a discreet roster full of shit houses, isn't it? <laughs> like, I'll Maybe show so. you, Seth. I'm going to beat up your little friend. No, yeah. not you. Whoa. <laughs> Put your chair back on, dude. Yeah. It, it's funny. It's like they don't want a piece. I don't even know what it is because I don't think he casts that intimidating a figure. Um you know they're all wrestlers, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think I think it's meant to come across, them, but I think it's meant to come across in a way that you know Seth is using Murphy as like his kind of bitch, basically. Um, I know, but it should like, be done more of a like Seth's the one going. You don't get to yeah. me. You go through him or whatever. Or they have a more imposing figure than Murphy as like the you know the the bodyguard, and then you go, all right, yeah, he, he would be someone you'd have to try and get through before you can get to Seth but it just feels really weird like they're just going nah, I don't want to take Seth on I'm just going to beat this ginger guy up <laughs> well yeah um, I don't know it's a bit of a bit of a weird one but it then obviously leads to a match because again as we know that's how matches get made oh yeah um, you know again we mentioned this in the previous the previous <laughs> What did they have planned for this show? Like, if people could just make up matches on the spot, like, how were they going to fill three hours? But anyway. no, I've, I've, uh, I think I've got a, a leaked script here for Raw, and it literally just says whatever. 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. I'll put it. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it doesn't actually sound as bad on paper as it comes across on screen. So <laughs> interesting. Um, but yeah, so that match happens. Umberto Murphy, the match we always wanted to see. Um, but no, joking aside, uh, Umberto is is a very kind of gifted athlete. Um, oh, definitely. Put on put on another good show in here. It's just a shame. I don't think he's a, you know, he got he got to do a little bit of mic work and stuff this time. And you know, he's not he's not fantastic, is he, on the mic? Let's be honest. But Sadly you know, not. His his ability in the ring to, should do the talking for him, really. And it was yeah. it was a decent match. Um, but overall. this is what the I mean. But, really, this is what they should be doing for people like Umberto. Like, no offense to Ray, but the fact that we saw him in the Money in the Bank match was a, a little bit annoying because we could be pushing younger talents, but the fact that they've used the situation here to give Umberto a little bit of a push in defending Ray, that works for me. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it was it was fine. Um, Rollins gets involved, causes a distraction. Uh, Murphy gets the win. Same old, same old chisel. Um, but then after the match, he gets kind of beat down and then Alistair Black comes out to make the save because... Okay, um, but we also find out that he's fighting Murphy as well later that night. So why is why is Murphy fighting twice in one night? But okay, I'll allow it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> we'll allow it <laughs> because as 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 we've you know got breaking news here, the script does just say whatever. Um, so it makes perfect sense. Um, <laughs> and then similar to Charlotte, just when we thought, you know, what is it with fucking kings and queens? Why the fuck are they everywhere? Right? No one likes them. Um, but now we get Corbin, obviously. <laughs> I'll was, be honest uh, with you. Sorry, go on. I'll let you discuss the Corbin seg before I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously we found out last week that, you know, the the fucking... It's not even a trade, is it? It's like the invitation or whatever the fuck it's called that, that nobody wanted has been made. And Raw, you know, sought out Corbin to take on Drew for some reason. Don't know who, again, like who sought him out because they haven't got any authority, but whatever. I know. We'll go with like, it. Like, do they, do they nominate a wrestler? Because it certainly seemed like... <laughs> when they first set up this this invitational, it seemed like Drew was the one who was given the invite as the world champ, which kind of made sense. But then we don't even know who invited Charlotte, so I don't have any fucking idea how this invitational works. Oh, God, yeah. Um, no idea. Definitely wasn't Drew um, <laughs> who invited him. So, yeah, the guy just turned up. Um, and, you know, he's he's taken on Drew later in the night, and he's he's pulling the whole King gimmick. You know, he's turned up. He hasn't got a locker. Nobody bowed to him when he, when he showed up. <laughs> And he's got to get his own food, blah, blah, blah. Um, do you know what? It wasn't that bad for Corbin. I'm, I'm you know, not lie. That's how I was going to be honest with you. Yeah, and you know yeah. me. I, I historically do not like Corbin as a as yeah. a wrestler. I'll stress as a wrestler. He might be a really nice guy. I don't know. You know, he might, like, I don't know, adopt puppies or whatever. But <laughs> um, as a character, I can't stand the man. And I don't, like, yeah. we've discussed many a time that I don't think it's the right kind of heat. It's the, it's the X-Pac heat. But that being said, this was, like, this was a really good way of coming along to Raw being like I'm, I'm, you know, big deal on SmackDown. Where's my fanfare? Where, you know, it. I actually, it worked for me this, especially because he tried to turn it into a into a bribery thing. I was like, you're well, gonna yeah, make this right what... later. I'm like, yeah, this works. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I was quite interested to see where that where that was gonna go. Um, because obviously he does he does kind of say that you know to make up for it, you better kind of do, do me a solid in in the match later on that night. So I assume there'd be some kind of uh, you know bribery afoot and it's kind of treachery afoot, but um. Mm. Yeah, but genuinely, the only issue I had with this segment, right, and it was the issue I highlighted last week, is why are you even there? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> why, why? Why is he even there? Why would you pick Corbin? Yeah, who knows? Like, let's face it, that, like especially because they've signposted how this is going to go. No one believes it's going to be a threat for Drew because he's already lost to Elias on SmackDown. So the consequence of him beating Drew on Raw would be kind of messed up, wouldn't it? To go well, he can't even win on like a mid card or on SmackDown, but he can beat the best guy on Raw. Yeah. It was never going to happen. But anyway, okay. They, they, they've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> they, they certainly have. They've gone and made a big mistake. Um, hey. <laughs> that's probably one of our favourite takers. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so interesting. Um, we then hear from Liv. I, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. So, um, the, the character evolution of Liv um, has been quite interesting, I think. There's been a lot of positives there like the stuff with um, Charlotte and stuff like that but there's been some awkwardness and for me this was this was so on the latter so she gets in like interviewed basically saying that her mum was a hero um you know they never had much growing up but you know her mum always had determination she never quit and she's her mother's daughter you know she might have lost a flair but she's learned in in that loss and she's determined to be women's champ one day I don't know I, I can't I don't really understand where they're going with it well for me this this is where it sort of, and I'm not talking specifically just about this segment, but this is where I was like, this gimmick's shit. 
right? Because this is basically her gimmick is to be pretty much every girl her age. Mm-hmm. Not not to like generalize, but at the same time, most girls her age are not sure what they want in life. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like that's her whole gimmick. It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure. My mom's my hero, and and I want to be the best, but I don't really know what I want. And I don't even know who I am. It's like, yeah, you're finding yourself because you're a young girl, and that's basically what what most girls your age are doing. And it, to me, it's not even a gimmick. Like, luckily, she's like really good in the ring at the moment, and hopefully, they're building some good feuds. Like, I've, I've most matches I've seen her and I've enjoyed. You can understand her wanting to go after Charlotte for the championships. So that match made sense. You can understand her wanting some um, redemption's probably not the right word, but wanting to sort of break out and take on Ruby Riot to prove a point. You know, that she's not just the girl from the Riot Squad anymore. All these things made sense. But this promo package was like, it's lovely. You know, she loves her mum. That's nice. But it just doesn't do anything for, for the character build. Like, she's already lost to Charlotte. Um, and is she, what is this hint that she's going to take on Asuka? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. It felt really weird because obviously she's a, she's being played as a face and, and Asuka's a face as well. So you can't see that happening anytime soon. So mm. I don't know. I just don't know where, what's next for her. I'm, I'm also feeling like a... Confused young girl because I I don't know what I don't know what I want. <laughs> angle. <laughs> I love it. You just gotta find yourself. Cal. Um, so have yeah, you, I don't know. Have you tried dyeing your hair blonde and wearing uh, leather? Uh, okay, interesting. I'll, uh, I'll give that a whirl. Well. Too. Why not? Nice. Um, yeah. So strange one. Um, I, I wasn't that keen on it too fair, which is a shame. But um, it segued nicely onto the next match of the night where. I can't get too much Charlotte fucking Flair, right? <sighs> so um, she's out next. Uh, goes on a little bit of a promo saying that Bailey and her lackey challenged her to a championship match. Blah blah blah. So like, okay, so why the fuck are you here? Why are you on NXT? Why are you, you don't do anything for the ratings? So just fuck off. Um, but yeah, apparently, she, uh, well, WWE aren't convinced. You know, maybe maybe they haven't got enough Charlotte. Maybe that's why the ratings are bad. Maybe maybe three <laughs> Charlotte matches in a night. Maybe do that. Hmm? I mean. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Um, but yeah, so the match was against Ruby Riot, and not really much to say about it. To be fair, pretty much a squash match, and like, a little bit of a shame for Ruby. I just don't think they've obviously got anything for her creatively. So because you, know, you can get her taking the loss, right? She took the loss to like shit. I forgot her name already. We were just talking about her. <laughs> Because you're confused, you you're confused. <laughs> you're trying to figure out who she. I've, is. Gone, I've gone back in my notes. I've figured out who she is. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, she took the loss to live. And then Liv subsequently took the loss to Charlotte. So, and I know it doesn't always work like this, but I'm like, well, de facto, you wouldn't be able to beat Charlotte because you couldn't beat Liv, who couldn't beat Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So, very unnecessary match, and it didn't do nothing for for Ruby. Like you say, she the loss to Liv made sense; it worked as a story, and you don't mind her taking a loss when it it works to a story. But this is just there getting squashed. This is like a developmental role. This really. Yeah, I just I'm really confused about like what are we meant to believe about the Charlotte thing. You know, she's. I think she was a Raw superstar originally, wasn't she? But then she won the NXT Championship, so that she can go there. And then she's being given the Invitational for SmackDown. It's like, wait, like, what show is she on now? Why, why is she on all three shows? More importantly, who's writing this? <laughs> why have they got such a hard on for Charlotte? This is so annoying. Like, this match didn't need to happen. This was a waste of space. Like, I don't even mind. Like, the NXT thing made sense, right? And without jumping too far ahead, the SmackDown match was a good match. So. What's the point in this one? Unnecessary yeah. squash. Exactly. Like I, d- I don't know why. Like why would she want to have you know a match anyway? Um, if she was if she had a fucking women's title match on Smack on a SmackDown, so strange. But mm. anyway, it was a match. It happened unexpected. You know, <laughs> unexpectedly, of course. Uh, Charlotte <laughs> picked up the win. Uh, I, know, I mean, so then... it's it's nice to see her getting the win. You know, having been <laughs> sort of mid carding for so long. And and that's it, you know, everyone, you know. I feel like she's almost about to break out and you know really get that share of the limelight. Yeah, I'd love so to see her get a push. Yeah. Woo. Um, <laughs> then uh, we get to see more shenanigans with MVP and Lashley. Um, so MVP basically says, you know, they're not going to be doing business together because Lashley's too too focused on clowns like our truth and and Lana. And he's like, oh shit, you can't talk about my wife that way. Um, you know, and then he said he could be facing Drew, and in order to do that, Lashley needs to free Lashley. Okay, is that going to be a new shirt? <laughs> Free Lashley. I mean, you'd, it wouldn't surprise me with WWEshop.com. That's WWEshop.com. Um, you, know, you know what worries me? And I haven't put it in the news segment because it didn't seem newsworthy, but I was reading earlier that um, they still have plans, not immediately, but down the line, for Lashley versus Brock. And it kind of worries me that they are going to eventually get Lashley versus Drew and put Lashley over. And I, I'm fearful of this. I just want to mention it now because I don't like Lashley. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like the only thing I'm hoping is that we won't see Brock anytime soon without fans in attendance. I don't think he's ever gonna. It's not worth as well. In a, um, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. So, mm. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, obviously they used to refer to Bobby, didn't they? And I'm talking about like the WWE writers and, and the backstage guys. They used to actually call him um, Black Lesnar. Yeah, I mean, in terms of stature and you know the way they conduct themselves in the ring, the comparison is fair. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they get away with that kind of nickname now, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. Apparently, so. that it's still the plan at some point, uh, which makes sense because they're both beasts, aren't they? But for me, I'm like Drew needs to have a good solid run, uh, and he should take the loss if they get to that point where he. I don't know what MVP's managerial capabilities are to put. Lashley in the uh, title scene more than anyone needs to be because as I mentioned last week, apparently all you have to do is ask. He, Drew's even said that he's going to be a fighting <laughs> champion. Ask. So yeah. why you need MVP? Don't know. Fuck knows. No idea. No idea. Um, so yeah, um, next we get a celebration um, of Asuka's uh, new championship reign um, on on the off the back of a uh, carry saying so. Um, she's got all balloons and shits, and then you know, Mrs. Charisma, um, Nia Jack comes out. I fucking hate hearing this woman talk, you know. She is so bad, she cannot talk to save her life. She's just got a terrible character. I don't like she doesn't play like the uh, I'm a monster heel and silent and whatever. Like, she tries to play, I don't even know what it is. She tries to be like sarcastic and like she reminds me of, like a valley girl kind of thing, but it's like it just doesn't work. Just shut up. <laughs> No, I'm with you on that. I, to be honest, and it's a, it's a pet peeve, and you know people might class it as nitpicky when I say it. But what annoyed me with it was when she's saying about like trying to insinuate, ask her, not insinuate, basically say that Asuka's looked her way into being champion. It's like, no, she won the match. No one knew that's what the stipulation was. Mm-hmm. But you know, if if beforehand, before Money in the Bank, if they'd have said this this women's Money in the Bank is going to be for the title, would that have still been looking into the title? No, no it'd still exactly. be a straight fucking win. It's like the time they put the belt on the line at the Royal Rumble. Mm. That was still winning the belt. Just because you won it at the Royal Rumble doesn't mean that you looked into it. Uh, It kind of bugs me that it's referred to, like she's tried to refer to, I don't know, she's a heel and she's trying to put it down and so on like that, but it's like, that's not how it works. She won the match and you didn't. You were in that match. (laughs) Yeah, well, exactly. It just doesn't make any sense, does it? But fortunately, um, Asuka shuts her up uh, by just kicking the shit out of her, which uh, I thought was, was really good, actually. <laughs> it was, I like um, that. It's fucking ballsy as well, isn't it? They, they haven't made her look timid against a woman who's clearly, you know, considerably bigger than her. Um, mm. She's just gone for her. And um, it, with a pretty decent kick to the head as well, so it made it look quite uh, quite yeah. uh, aggressive. You know, it was good, good the way they did it. I much, I much prefer just, like, just no nonsense straight up, like, stuff like this. Whereas if it was Becky who was still champ, she probably would just, like hit her once or something and then like said a one liner and then just w- put her sunglasses on and walked off or something. And then Maybe got she... a bag of money out and poured it on the floor. <laughs> There's my fine yeah. for all the things I'm not going to bother doing. <laughs> oh, that's so bad though. I'm not going to forget it, that anytime oh, soon. It still bugs me. Stupid, stupid shit. All I want to fix it is just a segment where they go, "Here's that money back. Just give it a sad <laughs> little paper bag back. Go, you didn't do oh, shit. Uh, so it turns out you're going to be going to be a mom now. Um, you may as well take this back for your kid. It didn't, like... We wouldn't feel right keeping it as you you didn't actually break <laughs> any rules at all. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> In fact, there's been a bit of a damn squib. Young just basically managed to to win just by you know pinning her from a submission yeah. move. So and we actually look back at the footage and all all you really ever did was was start driving a truck for some reason. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah stupid fucking shit um, but yeah anyway um, the the next segment then was uh, R-Truth who came who comes out uh, saying that Lashley's been beating him up a lot yeah that, that's that, true that is true but that's I don't know if you're aware of this Truth but uh, you're a wrestler <laughs> I mean it wouldn't surprise me if he wasn't aware of this to be honest it is R-Truth um, oh, yeah. but yeah um, I got a little bit of a chuckle out of him saying that you know he wants <laughs> that Tom Brady better watch his back as opposed to obviously Gronk. Um, See, just, this is much better than that uh, well, Cousin Ricky shit. Oh, God. Pretty Ricky. He was a fucking stupid too. Totally yeah. unaware uh, truth is just the best sort of truth. I love it. Yeah. But it's okay because he says, you know, Tom Brady better watch his back because... Um, and he also better watch this match and see see what he's going to do to Lashley this time. <laughs> and do, you know he, do you know what he does to him? Cool. Runs into Lashley's fists quite a lot. Ah, um, so face to fist style. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then he goes on to tap out to the uh, Lashley lock. <laughs> that's, right, that's, that's, that's my 
that's my new nickname for it. Like the Master Lock, but it's Bobby ah, Lashley as well. Isn't I it? like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds more intimidating than the Bobby Lock, to be fair. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> sounds also a little bit like got a hairball, doesn't it? Last <laughs> crash. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, MVP's there though, um, applauding his a. Uh, win on stage and then we cut to Lana backstage for some reason and continues to, to scream and shit so okay yeah I don't understand what the segments are with Lana like massively overreacting to things like mm. the only way it'd make it amusing for me if they like like Lashley's took her out on a date or whatever and she asked for a diet coke and they're like oh sorry we've not got diet and she does that then I'll be <laughs> like okay this bitch is crazy and that's kind of funny <laughs> but like right now it's like Seriously, why do you hate MVP so much? Have we even set this up? Yeah, who knows? it's like just the mere mention of him, and she's like, like no to sixty. I don't, I don't like. What, what's the thing? No idea. Yeah, no idea what's going on with that whole angle. To be fair, hopefully they just drop it. Like yeah. now, but yeah, anyway. drop it like a cat angle. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Or, I figured or it's the right not. day for it. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, as uh, we'll as we will talk about slightly later. Um. Yeah, so the next match we get uh, Bliss Cross Applesauce versus yeah. the Iconics um, for the women's tag straps. I know um, by the way, and I'm not defending Charlotte when I say this, but we see uh, Alexa Bliss and uh, Nikki Cross going on multiple shows and we're like totally fine with it. No issue at all. Oh, I know, yeah. Like, it just shows you, we, I'll be honest with anyone listening, we do have a bias. <laughs> do you know what though? Like, NXT, yeah. we, we definitely do. We definitely do have a bias, but... I'm pretty sure it is said that the women's tag champs can defend their titles on both shows. Yeah, it's just, whereas, yeah, it's just because they've only got one set of tag titles. I think it is established. Yeah, because isn't whereas, that how they got the match in the first place? Is they going like, well, mm. you never defend them on this show or something like that? Yeah, no. I think some some kind of shite. But so at least at least it's slightly believable. Whereas Charlotte's just like, oh, well, it, it, it's Charlotte. Yeah, and like, why are you here? Because I want to. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm I'm not as a. I mean, we are definitely biased, but I'm I'm not as bothered by by seeing these guys. But, not, I'll throw um, a little bit of honesty out there that we, we have a bias. We we like these two more, and therefore we have no problem with it. Yep, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Basically, guys, listen to this podcast. If you don't like what we say, fuck off because we're right. That's I'm the, right. That's the only way. Only way of life. Um, oh, it's true. Yeah. It's damn true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought I thought this match was okay. Um, it it was fine. It was just it was the finish that, that got me. Um, I don't know what it is with at the minute them just doing stupid disqualifications. This is the second one now. Where really was it a DQ? So um, Peyton Royce ends up throwing um, Alexa into the turnbuckle like three or four times. And the referee's <laughs> like, "No, you got to stop it. No, no." And then just disqualifies her. And it's like it's like that shit the other week. I can't even remember what it was. Um, oh, the, the Rollins thing. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, the unusual DQ with, with Rollins last week, wasn't it? Like, oh, yeah. He, pulled, um, he went on to, yeah. to like totally try and ruin his eye, but him pulling him out of yeah. the ring in the first place was a DQ. Exactly. So it's just like, what? what? Fucking ridiculous. Um, but again, this just felt so stupid, so lame of a DQ. Um, hmm. But yeah, so, you know, throwing someone into the turnbuckle while not being the active person apparently gets you DQ'd now. So, okay. Um so yep. uh, Bliss Cross Apple Source Retain. Um we then get to see Kyrie uh playing the, her little recorder thing backstage and um, when she then gets battered yeah. by Who Nia knew Jax. that Kyrie could play the recorder? Who knew? Fun who facts knew? for anyone who didn't know. It's fun and educational. And what more can you want from Monday yeah. Night? Um <laughs> <laughs> So then the next like I feel like there was just a lot of backstage segments here. So we had this Kyrie they, thing. They just had guys running around backstage with cameras because they didn't have fuck all planned. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, just, just capturing, you know, the shenanigans of life. Um, so Kyrie gets battered, and then we go back to the Iconics, who are now arguing backstage. Um, and, you know, Billy Kay is pretty furious with uh, Peyton for losing the match. Um, and then ends up slapping her across the face, and then they're both very sad about it, and they both cry, and they're both very sorry. I really don't know what they were getting out of this, and it worries me because we haven't got enough women's tag teams as it is, so you're really going to split these two up? What, what, yeah. what the fuck was that? I don't know. I think maybe either going to go one or two ways. They're either going to go towards like a, a breakup angle, or maybe that's like the the catalyst that's going to like kickstart like you know the next better version of them or something where they'll just start slapping shit out of each other and yeah. doing it for the good of the team. Who knows? I just, I, I, yeah, I, I, it, it just didn't work for me. I, I was good. I was glad to see them back. They put on a good match twice now, and um, it's like, yeah, cool. We'll we'll build something with this. Um, I feel like it's like, well, are you going to get a shot at the tag titles again just because you want it? So they're, they're probably out of the tag scene, maybe. I don't know. But even so, like, 
I don't, I, why split them up? Don't split them up. If you're listening, <laughs> don't Vince, do it. don't split them up. Yeah, Vince. Vince. Yeah, Vince. Um, but then it's okay because we get another back, uh, backstage segment and now this time Asuka um, confronts Naya, um, screams some shit in Japanese as per usual. Um, this bit actually was quite funny because <laughs> as she screams stuff in Japanese, Naya just kind of goes, oh, okay, and just walks past her because she can't understand <laughs> a word. Um, then she gets pulled back um, and just basically kicks her in the head as she falls onto a fucking mattress. Right, I'm not being funny. Thank God that was it. Just, but exactly, like, you know, they couldn't have made it look more fucking planned if they tried, could they? Like, surely, you know, how much of a diva must Naya be to say, well, I'm not falling onto something that looks believable. Just literally put a big fuck-off crash mat there for me to fall onto. Yeah. Fun fact, that crash mat was actually the same one Ray landed on. <laughs> yeah, <it> probably was. <laughs> They're fucking everywhere, mate. Everywhere. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so basically Asuka, you know, uh, kicks her in the head and she falls yeah. into a little bed and has a sleep. No, I've heard that they have to have a lot of these um, crash mats around now because uh, they worry that Vince might have one of his falls. He's, he's getting up there a little bit now. <laughs> Again, Imagine joking, that. joking. Literally just lined the whole fucking corridors everywhere with them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then we, this this is pissing me off, this next bit as well. Um, Sorry, so, before we move on though, did they literally go... Like backstage segment, backstage segment, backstage segment. Yeah. One after the other after the other. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. They really know how to, how to space things out, break things up, don't they? Yeah, totally. Totally. It wasn't a uh, fucking jarring and lethargic in the slightest. Um, but yeah, so we get all that and then we actually get a match. Um, this time it's a submission match because, you know, Natty can do a sharpshooter and that, you know, gives her a good advantage against a fucking former mixed martial artist. Right? Oh yeah. One who's known for choking people out, especially. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they have a submission match and uh, shock horror, Baszler picks up the win. You know, I don't know about you, I just I didn't see that coming. No, um, did not see that coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then this this fucking new gimmick, right, for whatever reason, the, the starting something with Natty now where after she loses a match, she throws some kind of temper tantrum. Um, and this just, this just reminds me, it's like borderline, the farting gimmick that she had a couple of years ago on SmackDown. And it's just, it's just stupid, it's just silly, isn't it? Yeah. The thing is, not to digress, right, but they, they do often do some horrendous gimmicks with women, right? And I th- it needs to be a segment on its own, right? But they, they really need to ask themselves sometimes with these gimmicks, right, where's this going to go? Because literally, where's this going to go? She's either going to stop doing it because it's boring, or what? No one's going to go, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a lesson and, and beat that out of you. It's, it's not going to be a story. It's not going to evolve into anything. It's just there throwing tantrums. They need to ask themselves that with every fucking facet of the show. Do you remember the fucking Eric Rowan spider thing? That li- They literally had no idea what the they fuck they were doing there. Absolutely nothing for that. And nothing. again, I would have been, and I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I would have been happier if it had been like a kitten or something that you just wouldn't expect. <laughs> Do you, you know, know what, what I mean? like, the that, fact that, that would it was be a fantastic. stupid fucking robot spider just annoys me. But exactly. do you remember, like, as another prime example of them doing something with a women's wrestler for, like, just for attention and it didn't actually have a plan or go anywhere? Do you remember Gillian Hall? Oh, the fucking weird um, wart on her face. Yeah. And they boxed themselves into a corner with that because she's like, well, I don't want to keep having this prosthetic on my fucking face all the time. And then they made the boogeyman fucking eat it. <laughs> That's how that story evolved. I mean, they've done some was, weird shit in the past, but they, they don't have put themselves in, like the minute you come up with a gimmick, right? Ask yourself how you're going to evolve it. How are you going to do anything with it? Because th- this tantrum thing is going to go fucking nowhere. It is mad. Like, I, I don't know what kind of writers they've got, but I don't think it's anyone who's ever written anything start to finish before. Like, it just, I think they've got like one line of comedian writers and like to get them to write fucking gimmicks and they're like, yeah. Haha, that'd be funny. And okay. But how do, how do you then carry that through? I don't know, but it's funny. Okay. Yeah, they need wrestlers who aren't going to be there next week. That's what they need. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, yeah. I'm not looking forward to wherever this is I, going. I because... feel tremendously sorry for Natty. I really do yeah. because she she loves the business. She's got a surprising amount of loyalty to WWE, considering the the Hart Dynasty and all that. You know, you'd think that she'd be, you know, not necessarily opposed to leaving them, but she's been there for a time and she's never wavered. But they don't have to put her through some shit stories and stuff like that. Yeah. And she's just she's just there to lose. Like, why she started kicking off now? She's been losing for fucking years. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I was just thinking, like, if with this gimmick, literally, she's gonna be having a paddy every fucking week because she never yeah. wins. But this is the thing, and it make more sense if she wasn't used to losing. Mm. Like, why have we started kicking off now? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Against fucking Shayna Baszler as well, who's like practically undefeated except for Becky Lynch. Yeah, it's, it's not like she's losing to jobbers. 
or exactly. undercard talent or developmental talent we've never fucking heard of. She's losing to a credible like main event wrestler. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway. Yeah, so that was stupid. Yeah. Um, speaking of stupid, uh, we then get the Mexican medley backstage arguing. Oh, good. Again. We haven't been backstage in a while. Yeah, exactly. So it's nice, nice to check that place out, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they're more arguments. of backstage than I did at the Randy Orton Edge match here. Fucking hell, <laughs> and yeah, it still doesn't feel as long. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Selena breaks it up because obviously it's a little stable and she doesn't like them fighting. Um, but then big news you know, we last saw Kevin Owens after his uh, match at Mania with Seth Rollins where he said he's going to come back to bigger and better things. And do you know what? He's back and it's to host the Kevin Owens show with the Mexican Yay. medley. The okay. Fuck. So he he basically alludes to like he he was really like banged up from that match and he was taking some time to heal or whatever, but that just didn't make him sound good at you know what I mean. He had but this yeah. like so it turns out uh, Seth Rollins is a beast, although he didn't like win the match, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so Seth was the one who lost the match, got absolutely obliterated, but he was back the next day sound. Okay, and then <laughs> Kevin Holmes like like yeah he's he's been off for like I weeks. Think, now. I think big Kev, we've got two wrestlers here. Got thrown off a fucking building the other day. <laughs> Didn't even miss a week. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, what a fucking, what a damp squib of a return for someone who, like, you know, Kevin Owens, who fucking, we, we, we love the guy. And it's just like, we, we were wondering at the time when he was like, okay, what's, what's going to be next for him? Is it going to be like a, a main event push or something like that? Because he was talking it up and then he's back to do this shite. But... I know. But do you know what? They didn't even have to sell it like he was banged up. They could have gone like, oh, I've only, I haven't even finished celebrating or I had some time off, well-deserved or whatever. He didn't have to say that he was like banged up or whatever. Do you know what I mean? They didn't yeah. have to insinuate it that way. Fucking stupid. Yeah, I know. Um, but then, yeah. And we love Kev, but I'll be honest, I hadn't even missed him. I hate to say it because he's a great wrestler. But it was like, I saw it and I'm like, oh yeah. It wasn't like I was like looking for him, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think it's probably down to the execution of how he's back. Like if he would have brought him back in some kind of, you know, kick-ass capacity, it would have been really good. But he's coming back to do a talk show. That's why, you know, I was a bit like, oh, okay, yay. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's uh, he's back and his guests are the Mexicals, uh, Mexican medley, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they come out and Zelina's like, I'm sick of everyone saying my empire's crumbling. Well, it is, mate. So just get on with that. Yeah. Um, and who's everyone? Like, <laughs> exactly. Everyone. I wouldn't have said that much. <laughs> and uh, so basically she's asking why Kevin Owens just stood on the apron. He's not in the ring. It's a lack of respect. Um, he says, well, no, no, it's because it's I've got another guest and it's Apollo Crews returning. Oh, oh okay. so it was a story thing to kick him out of money in the bank for no fucking reason then. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, Please. and Why then not? we some we somehow get a, a tag match of Owens and Cruz versus Andrade and Gaza, and then Austin Theory just at ringside. Okay, um, he does try and get involved though in the match and ends up costing Gaza. Um, so Apollo ends up picking up the win there, and then after the match, Gaza and Andrade beat down Austin Theory um, and basically disown him from the Mexicals. And Selena was totally cool with that issue. I mean, yeah, seemed like she was fine with it. After all that, it was like, no, no, please stop fighting, uh, stop bickering, just just twat theory, and it's cool. Um, <laughs> so yeah, get, get, he's not like us. Get rid of him. Yeah, solid uh, fucking, solid fucking <laughs> WWE. Love it. Yeah, definitely no 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 racism angle there whatsoever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then next Drew comes out and I ah, wasn't wasn't good, you know. I'm a massive Drew fan. I wasn't into this. Um, he basically, um, in fact, though he doesn't come out, he's getting into me backstage, I think, by Caruso, and he's basically saying that, you know, he's not sure whether he goes and finds the fight or whether it finds him every week, but, you know, he's having fun. And Monday nights are always go for a Claymore, Claymore party. Fucking hell. I'll, I'll clue you in, Drew. They're scripted. <laughs> so it's it's actually the uh, the backstage guys who are, who are booking your matches, you know. <laughs> no one's finding shit. Yeah, fuck no, uh, you know, suspension of disbelief. Fair enough. He, he keeps running into spontaneously built matches that clearly they had the time to put on. But uh, yeah, the Claymore party thing. If you know what, it, this felt too forced for me. Yeah, um, and he's done a really like phenomenal job of not coming across forced in the slightest ever since he won that belt. But yeah, this this would this was a hit. This was a miss for me. A massive miss. I think the problem here is um, this would have been idea. They could have given him the week off here. They didn't really have anything for him. Like, the Corbin thing didn't need to happen. Do you know what I mean? Mm. All right, it was going to happen, but, like, I, I don't know. For me, they could have even just given him a week off from coming out and, and saying stuff. 
you know, because there's not a lot to say about this match. It's like, there's a bit of history there. We've invited him because there's this invitational thing they've set up randomly. You know, he doesn't need to talk down every opponent he has. It's as simple as that. It's just a wrestling match. He's got no built-in feud there. Do you know what I mean? It made sense when he was coming out and giving Andrade that shit. It was personal. But this time it's like, we invited some, someone from over from SmackDown, so I'm going to have to, like, say something, aren't I? And that, to me, that's why it sort of felt forced. It just was, it was naturally less organic than, than some of the stuff they've been doing. Yeah. Plus, it's a bit of a shit slogan, Claymore Party. Oh, God, yeah. Not, not a fan. Not a fan at all. I know it's my own uh, my own one, and that's why I'm like, yeah, this one's good. But he should stick with, like, talk less, Claymore. That, that's a slogan right there. That's the shirt <laughs> I would buy. Yeah, same. But no. Same. No, we go with Claymore Party because it sounds a little bit like it might be something you could do with, like, Claymore Country or... You know your um, Suplex City and all that kind of shit. I can see the the, the god awful shit they're gonna make with that now. Claim up. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think is that I can see it as well. It's gonna be like him just like doing a claim or, but like in like a dance club in it. I was just gonna say yeah. claim or party they, and like. Are they gonna do it like a lame like, vibes? Or even just go like full birthday party and have like the um, the hats and the streamers and stuff. <laughs> There's loads they could do. It. Unfortunately, loads they could do with it. Yeah. Well, that being said, saying, saying that, that though, sorry, it's still, I was going to say, saying that, it'll still just be like him holding a sword and it'll just say Claymore, Claymore Party in like like Celtic font. I'm not even sure they go to that effort. I mean, looking at the last shirt they made for, for Becky Lynch, maybe they knew then she was going <laughs> to go off on maternity leave because it was just words on a black shirt. <laughs> Nothing. So, yeah. you know, I don't think they're into putting effort in at the minute. No. Um, which which goes a lot into this next match. Um, <laughs> Segway. <laughs> um, so pulling the double duty for for the night was old buddy, buddy old pal, buddy Murphy. Um, not your buddy well, pal. <laughs> not your Murphy buddy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, he's taking on Andre, uh, Alistair Black, and um, I don't know, just yeah. <laughs> it, to be honest, I just I don't like the guy Alistair Black. I just really don't like him, and this this just made me laugh again because. He's like this creepy little emo vampire guy, isn't he? And he, he like, you know, he did his little rise from his coffin. And then, like, then he had a sense of urgency to, like, almost run down the ring. It's like, well, fucking hell, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they need to have some common sense. And they go, we're not going to do the rising out of the coffin thing because he's going to come at him like he wants to get at him. So you run yeah. down the ramp. You just run out down the ramp because he's had to load himself into that fake fucking rise out of the ground coffin platformy thing. So, like, there was a lot of, like, all right, get in there. We'll raise you up, and then you run. It's like it, it's just stupid. Don't put, either yeah. don't put the urgency in, like you say, or just have them run straight out and skip that. It's not like yeah. they have to do the same gimmick every time, you know. No, and it just but, believe it or not, him. when the American badass was a thing, there was a, a couple of times he didn't come out on a bike. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. And you know, Undertaker. There was that one time that he just fucking completely broke character and started like legging it down the ring. I mean, he got he was set on fire at the time. But you know, <laughs> but even that was out of character for him. In all fairness, <laughs> he is not normally on fire. Exactly right. So you know, fucking, I'll switch it up, Black. Fuck's sake. Um, so yeah, he uh, he's fighting Murphy for the, uh, Murphy's second match of the night. Um, interesting. All the stuff that's been going on is uh, Austin Theory is still pretty much dead um, at the side of the ring. So, you know, no referees give a fuck about him. No one helped him to the back. He's just been dead this whole time. Um, and, okay. you know, yeah, so Seth just notices that he's at, uh, he's at ringside, um, helps him up. Wait, so then, he was legit there that, like the whole time? The whole time. So ever since he got beat down, he was just lying on the floor. Um, Have they ever so, done that before? <laughs> no. Um, I don't know the short on staff at the minute, but fuck. Exactly. Um, so yeah, like to Eddie, see Eddie was like still conscious and he was bleeding from the eye, but they had EMTs and everything coming out. That guy was <laughs> just lying there. Do you know what's funny? I think, did you just call him Eddie? <laughs> I, oh shit, I did. <laughs> They've merged into the same person though. See, it, it, it's, it's exactly what That's Ray entirely wanted. Ray's fault. <laughs> That's exactly what Ray wanted. That's all um, I think about when I see his stupid masked face. <laughs> But yeah, um, so, you know, apparently Austin Theory was just lying there this whole time and no one thought to, like, help him up or see if he was okay or anything. But do you know who did? Seth Rollins. And he gives him uh-huh. a lovely hug, lovely little hug. Um, and then he orders him to go <laughs> yeah, in. And that uncomfortable Alistair. hug from a weird uncle. Exactly, right? Um, so, basically, Austin Theory has now joined uh, the Messiah's little band of over there. Um, but I thought it was really <laughs> it was funny. Band of, can... band of merry men. Band of merry men. Um, and I thought it was just really funny because, um, 
you know, Theory does gets involved, he beat down Alistair Black, blah, blah, blah. And Seth's just hugging uh, Theory and Murphy just looks on like so like distraught, like someone has literally just shacked his missus right in front of him. <laughs> Just, just tickling no, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I feel like they're going to go into some kind of fucking cuckold angle with this or something because it was proper fucking weird. Um, yeah. Set yeah, up a so... feud between Murphy and Theory. Yeah, maybe, down the line. Seth on just a pole a match. Theory. <laughs> you never know. Um, so, yeah. And then, fucking hell. I'd... Keen to hear your thoughts on this one because we, we disagreed last week, but more shite with the fucking ugh, Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. So... I'm loving it. I'm still loving really, it. you know, you can't be seriously. The less I see them in the ring, the better. I want these these stupid uh, competitive non wrestling fucking gimmicks between them. A lot of them, fuck it. I don't need title matches. <laughs> I don't need actual wrestling. I then tune into <laughs> Raw to watch wrestling. Oh no, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I would prefer to see them in the <laughs> ring. I just would prefer not to see fucking either of them ever again. No, um, I think um, to be honest, even being completely honest, right, I am enjoying the segments, but it for me, it's doing more to ingratiate me to the uh, Street Profits than it is to the Raiders. I don't think it's really doing much for the Raiders, but it's it's helping me like the Street Profits more because so far I couldn't stand them. But the fact that they've been willing to be a little bit goofy with these guys and have a bit of humor about themselves, it's a much better than listening to them talk shite. Um, and it, yeah. it, it, it's doing a lot for the Street Profits as far as I can see. Probably not a lot for the Raiders, but I couldn't stand the Street Profits. So any any time that they're, they're not coming across as obnoxious, I'm happy. Yeah, I just for me, I don't think it, it helped anybody. Um, you know, I Viking totally Raiders. disagree, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this outside um, no, for, an axe, for an axe throwing contest? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the Viking Raiders came across looking like a fucking bunch of larpers. Um, I mean, there with, the fucking... with all due respect to them, they are. Well, yeah, there you go. Um, so <laughs> I, that that was stupid, and then I. I just don't think they're funny. The street profits—they just don't make me laugh. They're—they're they're not funny. They're—they're they're big. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like the the loud. I like the guy and, who thinks being loud is humorous, and it's, it's yeah, not like, humorous. That is that is them for me, and I just I don't know. I just don't dig them. I just think you, the whole thing is a waste of time. Maybe <laughs> 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 that that is my Seth Cohen coming out saying that it's a uh, it's big, and I don't want them to go bigger at all. Um, yeah, bad. Very bad. Oh, Not I mean, fun. again, I, I'm enjoying it, but I, I really, really couldn't stand the way they were on the mic, the profits. But these skits, are, it's less them talking. Well, not even talking to the camera because they always do this thing where they have to talk to us as the audience, but look in the top corner of the fucking room for some reason. Mm. Like tonight, and you're like, yeah, we're over here. Camera's over here, dickhead. Big bit of machinery right in front <laughs> of you. Um, but anyway, when they're on the mic, I'm not a big fan. But these sort of skits, I, I actually really enjoy. Um, and again, I, I understand fully why you don't like them, but it, it is. Um, I think this is better than the shit they were doing before. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably is better than than that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm probably just being overly harsh, but I'm just I'm I'm not digging it. It's not for me. That's fair. Um, and you see, guys, just then... for anyone listening, this this is how it works. You know, I feel one way, he feels another way, and yet we can both admit that that you know it is what it is there's no toxicity or anything like you normally see on the internet i don't now hate him or want to send him any threats i like one thing exactly. like, you prick um <laughs> <laughs> fuck you carl <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry um no it's fine yeah. I, I love it it's a good bit of humor there. i assume um, you're joking i mean i'm still gonna go and cry later anyway just to be sure <laughs> And then the the podcast ends, and uh, that that was A to the K. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, so next we get Apollo Cruz in the interviewed. Um, says he's not sure what hurt more, the injury or losing his money in the bank spots. Well, you weren't injured, mate, and you know it was just all storyline, wasn't it? So, stupid. and and let's be honest, in theory, if you got buying into cafe, the injury hurt more. <laughs> but that's you know your money in the bank spot was. Uh, probably still going to go the same way. It was still going to be Otis catching a case that some fucker dropped. Um, oh, God, yeah. This is probably pushing you towards a, a, t- a title match anyway. So uh, everyone wins. I wouldn't even be that hurt about losing the money in the bank spot. You're getting a much better position now. Well, exactly. Um, From what I can and, see. <laughs> yeah. And he basically um, decides that, you know, he he's also um, a little bit like Liv, <laughs> Liv Morgan where he still needs to <laughs> figure out, you know, what... Yeah. <laughs> what he wants in life, uh, like most girls his age. Um, but no, he he basically says that... Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Zelina basically says, you know, if you can have a match if you want with uh, Andrade, but you know he's going to break your leg this time or whatever, um, or you'll never walk again or something. But he's cool with that, so that's going to happen next week. <laughs> totally okay. cool with the never walk again thing. <laughs> totally cool. Um, and then the main events that we all didn't really care about uh, was Drew versus Corbin. Uh, before the match starts, Lashley is apparently putting Drew on notice. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's with MVP now. So after him saying he's not going to be with MVP, now he's with MVP. And they stand there. And, and they make him. a lovely couple. But, yeah, you know, it's a uh, young love, isn't it? Uh, he's he's, he's less, less crazy than uh, Lana. So Lashley's got that goal for him. So far. Um, <laughs> so far. But, well, let's wait uh, and see what happens when Lashley finds another manager and we'll see how MVP reacts. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I thought was funny about this is they did this ahead of the match and basically Lashley is putting Drew on notice. So it's like, okay, so Corbin's definitely not winning then. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I can just f- fast forward this then, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very harsh on Corbin, but the match itself was pretty good. I thought these two had really good chemistry. Um, they, yeah, they fa- I mean, they faced to me, you can tell there's actually a bit of history there with them because they do work yeah. well in the ring and you can you can usually see chemistry. Um, it's like, and I'll go on to it with SmackDown, but it's like AJ with, with Shinsuke. You can tell that they've wrestled before, they know each other well, they've worked well. Uh, and you could definitely see that between these two. And like you say, we don't often give Corbin credit, but I'd have to say the same. It was actually a really good match to watch. Yeah, I, I thought it was really good. And, um, you know, Corbin did come close quite a few times as well. So Drew did a good job of kind of, um, even though he took the win, he, he did kind of put Corbin over quite big, you know, considering he got beat by Elias the week before. It's uh, definitely helped Corbin out in, in the long run, I think. But mm, Yeah, it's a fair point, yeah. And then, so yeah, basically Lashley is next now for Drew. Yay. Yeah, he's had a, he's had a stellar um, run of opponents, hasn't he, after Brock? He had... Uh, Seth Rollins. Whoa, 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 whoa. Seth Rollins wasn't his first opponent, Cal. Oh, of course, the big show. Thank you. Let's not forget about <laughs> the big show. <laughs> how could one forget? You know, the, the, the stellar list gets bigger and bigger, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, fucking hell. So, I don't know. Mm. I mean, the, this is almost as exciting as the potential of Otis going against Braun Strowman. That's how exciting this is. I don't think anything can quite live up to that level of excitement. I just can't wait. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that was raw for me. It was a two out of five. Yeah. It was okay. I'd probably land this. I'd, I hate doing this because I feel like I do it quite a lot, but I'd probably land the same way. I think that's a fair assessment. It, it would be a, a solid two. Way heavy on the backstage segments this week. Um, they really mm. need to. To me, that's a structural problem as well because they could have had those backstage segments. But why go like three, three in a fucking row? Why not put a match in between them? What the yeah. fuck was the point in that? I think as well, like, they, they wasted Kevin Owens as a return for me because that, that's just like, oh, okay, he's back now and he's still doing nothing. So that that was a shame. Um, it, it almost kind of ruins the, I don't want him going after Seth again, don't get me wrong, but the fact that Seth is still very much carried, it's not even affected Seth's momentum, that loss to Kevin Owens. Mm. Um, so it's like, well, are you done with him because weren't you teaching him a lesson or, or something? You know, you, were, you had a big issue with him being the Monday Night Messiah and then you beat him. And he's still being the Monday Night Messiah, and he's he's actually like, you know, kayfabe dangerously hurt somebody now. So uh, you you just not bothered by that? We're just gonna do the talk show, okay? Weird. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, definitely wasn't the best. It was definitely a number two in many ways, um, for me. So <laughs> two is two is the rating. Yep. Now to- in total agreement, two two's all round. Two's all. Round. 